So, okay, so what what kind of medium do you use? Do you, do you still use uh, pencil sketching? Do you use uh, the, the Wacom tablet? Yeah. Now, what, do, you, do you use both? What kind of stuff do you use well, I'm, I'm to, a, to produce your work? I am sort of, I spent like six years at art college, various, like two universities and art college, and all the way through that, I never actually touched one computer. It wasn't until I actually got the job at Bizarre Creations that okay. I was actually introduced to computers. Alright, so you wow. never used a computer before um, you worked at Bizarre Creations? Bizarre Creations. Wow. I was taking up Bizarre Creations purely on the strength of me art portfolio, wow. my drawings and me stuff like that. Um, I didn't know what a Wacom tablet was, I didn't know how to plug a PC in, never mind, no so I loaded one up. Copy and paste, like Control C and B, I just couldn't grasp that for about a month. Wow. <laughs> it was like, so, so do you think um, the industry's changed as uh, the, the creative bit where, you know, you know, concept artists maybe, like you said, back in, back in when you started off, no one was using computers. So is it, has it changed a lot since then or is it, is it, is it purely based on, on the Wacom tablet? Do, do, still, do people still create drawings in pencil these days? Yeah, I mean, what my work process tends to be, um, first is literally thumbnail sketches with the pencil. Right. From there, I'll um, literally draw them up in pencil first, and then I'll add bit, bits of green markers, toothbrush splatters. So what I've basically got is a black and white drawing that's got no colour, it's not finalised, and then at that point I'll take that into Photoshop, okay. uh, Photoshop or Paint or whatever. And then from the from the grayscale pencil drawing, that's when I start adding my colours, my right. textures, my paints. I mean, I could literally draw it up on screen. Don't give all your secrets away, yeah. Lee. <laughs> I think what it is, I, I do like the texture of paper on the yeah, pencil itself, look and the marks and that. stuff like that. But I am get. I just bought myself one of those Syntec things. Oh, wow. I've had them for about a few years. How did you get that past your wife? Well, I didn't actually. I just came on one day <laughs> and left it outside. Uh, it took about two weeks for it to talk to me again. No way. <laughs> wow. Which is, but to my thing, it has brought extra money in and it has kept me busy. And of course. Busy. Okay, so we're going to wrap up, I guess, with this interview, and I'm going to ask you one last question. What, what, what is in store for Lee Carter? Um, you know, what are your personal goals, and uh, more importantly, what are your future plans for, for what's Lee Carter going to be doing in the future? Well, plans are, so far, is that I would really like to obviously concentrate more on the comic strip stuff, uh, just purely because it's very, very cool and very interesting. Um, it's your voice, if you know what I mean. Mm -hmm. Games are fantastic and a fantastic team sort of mentality, but there is a team project. Whereas comics, I find a little bit more personal, a little bit right. leaving you a bit more of yourself out there. Yeah. Um, you can take the flack for computer games, but you've also got a hundred people else to sort exactly. of take the credit or the flack for as well. Whereas a comic, I mean, there's, there's more sort of element of your creative input in in comics because it's it's you. And, and the paper and, 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 no, and, and no one else yeah. like in, in the computer games industry sometimes you know uh, you can come up with a vision or, 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 or a concept bit of art and it can get sifted through so many people that it, it becomes diluted and never Definitely. becomes a pure form of your vision so so you like the, the, the comic because it's it's purely your vision and it's, it goes yeah. between you and the writer and, and it can, becomes and a pure thing sort of any editorial there's no editorial input and input there's no editorial I mean, yeah. generally the editors hire you for what you do, um, so they're not, they're not hiring you to draw like this, they're hiring you because they've seen your work and they want the comic strip to look like your work. So I, I generally wouldn't get hired and someone say, right, what can you do in the style of so and so and so and so. And that's the nice thing because it is, you are leaving your mark, like leaving your mark in the world, yeah. you're leaving something out there. Um, so that is cool. cool. Really. And I, I don't like computer games, I love working on them. But I say comics are a bit more of a personal statement than okay. computer games. So cool. obviously, there's, it's a very expensive thing, computer game development, and it's not really enough room for personal. Of course, yeah. Wanna, yeah, you know what I mean. <laughs> so, for the aspiring concept artists out there and comic artists, um, you know, what kind of advice can you give them? Uh, if you if you could sum up the industry in thirty seconds and give, uh, you know, advice in that thirty seconds. Um, I, I'd say, I mean, don't expect too much too too soon. I mean, it's took me a long time to get where I am, and I'm 30 odd now. And I've actually been doing art full time since I was 16. Wow. And I've looked, I had the embarrassing thing the other day of seeing some of my old art like from 20 years ago posted online that someone had found. I thought it was shit hot then, but it wasn't. <laughs> <laughs> um, 
So what, what about people that, that become maybe uh, disillusioned with this? Because I've, I've been reading some stuff online uh, just the other day on Twitter, actually. Um, a guy became really sort of disillusioned with his skills because he, he wanted to create something really special, but he, he was trying to do it in, in very little time. So what, what, what kind of advice do you have for people like that, that, that think that, you know, things should just happen straight away and, and, and there's, there's very little effort to, to this sort of thing. It's, it's, it's hard work doing this sort of thing. So yeah, I mean, what do people just give up? What do they do? Do they keep going? Well, I think, I think a lot of people think artists constantly pull out good work. But I think what you find is artists probably the work that they're proud of. I think you'll find in any great art sketchbook, there's hundreds of bad drawings. And what it defines them is knowing the good drawings. Yeah. I think what tends to define an artist is knowing what he likes might transfuse other people what they're like. And I, I wouldn't sit down. Hard on the <laughs> do they keep going? I mean, yeah, do they give going. up? No, keep, they'll keep going. Because as I say, if I, was, if I had to give up when I was 16, 17 and just got a job, obviously I wouldn't be in the position I am now. Of course. Um, well, that, that sounds amazing, uh, Lee. Uh, you're obviously a very talented guy um, and an inspiration to many aspiring artists. Um, you're also a very busy guy, so I really want to thank you for uh, spending time to do this interview today. Um, so, thank you very much. Thanks, uh, so, until next time, I'm Anthony Felici, and this is CGArtistDaily.com. Bye for now.